Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We will, uh, we will go through each, each uh, episode and discuss one section of our holy and divine liturgy. Today we want to talk about how the Coptic Church even, even, even goes through uh, preparation of the liturgy. As we know, many of us, we know the climax of the Holy Communion. And some of us want to just come to church and say, where's communion? Where's communion? But the church, of course, prepares us, prepares us through the liturgy first, the liturgy of the faithful. And before that, the liturgy of the word. And even before that, the raising of incense in the morning. And even before that, the raising of incense in the evening. Why do we need to prepare? Why do we need to prepare? Because it's, it's a whole process of getting ready, making us worthy, sanctifying us. As we know in many, many things, we start, we don't just start off if you're going to go play basketball or you're playing soccer or hockey or something. You always, you always stretch, you always warm up, you take some shots, and then you start the game. We don't go right into the game and right, right into the fourth quarter. Uh, so we, we have a preparation period and that is very, very important. And that's the Coptic Church. You'll always see before anything there's always a period of preparation. And it's very, very important to prepare. So we prepare ourselves, not even the morning of, but the night before, with the evening raising of incense. And even before that, there's even praises and prayers before that as well. We're gonna go through the, the raising of incense before we get into the divine liturgy. And we also wanna say that this is, this is very critical. The church is teaching us to take it seriously to take if we want to benefit the most of our divine liturgy, if we want to understand, if we want to be alert, we need to be, we need to be ready, not just the day of, but the day before as well. So that means sleeping early. That means getting enough rest. That means coming to church and preparing ourselves with prayers and praises. So all our focus, even before we wake up, so while we're sleeping, we're thinking, and we, we, we even have the smell of the incense going to bed, uh, reminding us of our great uh, day of Sunday after that. So when we prepare, we prepare the night before, and then in the morning, it's also very, very important. Uh, if we sleep early, we'll wake up early as well. And as we know, this is one of the most, when we say the, the Holy Communion is one of the most things that the devil fears the most, which means He's also going to try to try to not let us have it the most as well. Meaning, maybe he wanted to, he wants to he wants to make us sleep sleep in, or sometimes we we as a family will prepare and we're rushing and we get into fights. So that all that stuff helps us. All that stuff is is a deterrent to enjoying and benefiting from the divine liturgy. So in preparing. We even pr should pray psalms. We can pray, there's some psalms that the church has for us that uh, you can find in, in any of the church books that we could pray psalms. Instead of maybe arguing in the morning or in the car or if we're driving in, we can pray psalms. Again, preparing ourselves so that when we're entering the church, we're not entering you know, over a fight or the, your kids in the back seat that they had or who's going who's gonna to be uh, the deacon that's going to hold the, uh, the witch candle. So we're not, we're, not, we're not talking, we're not even listening to music. We, we are praying and singing psalms in, pre in preparation of this great day. So it works in life and works also with our spiritual uh, self. We are not robots. We cannot turn ourselves on as soon as we get to church at 8.30. It starts the day before, it starts the morning of, and as we, we enter. We know that the climax is the Holy Communion, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And some of us, that's all we, we, we want to have. And some of us, maybe we say, uh, we're, we, you know, this is, this is too much. This is great. This is like too much for me. I'm not worthy. That's why we pray, and we pray a lot. And you'll see the, pray, the priest will pray uh, inaudibly as well to make us worthy. Make us worthy 
means we, we, we are not worthy, but He makes us worthy. How does this worthiness start? It starts through the whole process. Again, if we come in, uh, if we come in early, and we read, we'll hear, uh, we'll hear all the readings from the from the pulpit, and He have the Word of God into our into our ears, into our hearts. We have the hymns. We have we're, we're, we're all this stuff, and 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 the sermon and the prayers. This helps us, makes us worthy to start. So when we say make us worthy or we're not worthy, you're, we are, you're right in one way, but not complete. Yes, we're not worthy, but we, He makes us worthy. But we need to come and be sanctified, to be purified, uh, to be set apart, to set apart our day so that He makes us worthy. We have to do our side, which is to come early, come prepared, to hear uh, everything that's going to be said in the liturgy. So when we start, when we start, the first thing you'll see is the priest will always pray uh, with, with a cross in his hand. A cross will come and open the curtain uh, that is always closed unless we are in the divine liturgy. So we open with the key. This is what we call the key. And the priest starts with a small prayer. Have mercy on us, O God, the Father, the Pantocrator, Holy Trinity. Have mercy on us. O Lord God, our host, be with us. We have no help in our hardships and tribulations but you. And we start off with the Lord's Prayer. And um, after bowing and asking that for everyone to for, forgive the, the priest, who is also a sinner, we start praying. And what prayer do we pray? We always start every service with the Thanksgiving prayer. We start the Divine Liturgy. We start the raising of incense. We start a baptism, uh, even in our weddings, and even in our funerals. And even in our funerals, we start with the thanksgiving prayer. The thanksgiving prayer starts with let us give thanks to the beneficent. So we start the, 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 the liturgy telling you are good God. You are wonderful God. You're beneficent. You're merciful. So right away we, we, are, we, are, we are focused on, on the Lord himself. Telling him that you are beneficent. That you are a merciful God. And then we, we say why? Because he's covered us and helped us, and accepted us, and He spared us, and He's guarded us. He's done all these things. So He is good, and He is merciful, and He's done all these wonderful things. And we thank God in every condition. As St. Paul teaches us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. And the church teaches us to be in a thankful mood. The thankfulness is a great remedy for complaining. If we are complainers, then we need to, we need to turn our complaints into thanksgiving. How, uh, how do we do that? Through this, this prayer is a great, great way. So we pray in everything. We pray knowing that we accept the good and we accept what seemingly is maybe not as good in our eyes, but in the eyes of God, it is always good because God is beneficent, as we said. He's good and He's merciful and everything that he does is a good thing. So we give thanks in everything. We say that, you know, all envy, all temptation, maybe it be far from us. So we pray also that in this, in this prayer, wherever it is, whether it's raising of incense, whether it's a liturgy, whether it's uh, whatever prayer we're praying, we say any envy, any temptation may be far from us. Take it away from us, O Lord. But the good things provide for us. So we pray that we are not led into temptation. We pray that all envy, we pray all that stuff to be taken away, but we pray but all those things that are good and profitable. So the profitable things, that they come to us as well. In the prayer, we give thanks also, and we say that He has given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and every power of the enemy. So all these things are mentioned in our Thanksgiving prayer. So as you can see, we have not even started uh, any, anything yet, but we, we are at least coming to church. We're preparing ourselves from the night before. We come to church for Vespers. We come to church for midnight praises and prayers. And we're getting our bodies uh, and our souls and our spirits all ready for our climax, which is our Holy Communion. This is how 
uh, my brothers and sisters, this is how we, when we say make us worthy, we do our part in all this, coming early, singing and praying psalms, coming early and partaking of this beautiful Thanksgiving prayer. So may we always, we, we always start our liturgy in preparation, in preparation. This starts our sanctification process. This is what makes us worthy. And this, if we do this, we don't have to feel guilty. We don't have to feel ashamed. How can I, a sinner, partake of the holy body and precious blood? Because he makes us worthy, because he washes us, because I am sanctified by his word that I hear, by the prayers that are prayed, by the praises I pray with my own lips. So we, we will, will, will end this session, but we want to remember this key word, preparation and sanctification. Glory be to God forever. Amen. And we'll see you next time in the next steps of, the, of explaining through the liturgy. Thank you.